something on your mind anytime. I'm here to listen, sister talk. When you need someone who understands, I know what you're missing, sister talk. No matter what you're going through, don't worry, I ain't going nowhere. Sister talk. If you ever feel alone, say the word, I'll be right there. Sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk, sister, sister. I am so excited today. You all don't know this, but my passion is film. I am an aspiring filmmaker, and I have today the real sisters of the Di Diaspora Film Festival and Lecture Series. Yes, and they're here to talk about their upcoming film festival, October the 13th and 14th. Thank you. Carolyn, I'm going to start <laughs> with you. Before we get into the film festival, before you came up with the idea, I want to um, you just to elaborate on African voices. How yeah. did you, when did you start that? And why did you start that? Well, I started in 1992. Okay, African Voices. It's African a, Voices. It's a magazine. magazine like, that's, okay. Yeah, it's a literary magazine, which we've been publishing for 20 years. Mm -hmm. We publish fiction, short stories, short plays. Mm -hmm. It features beautiful artists on the front cover. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason why I started African Voices was um, at the time, there wasn't an outlet like that mm -hmm. for this generation to mm -hmm. express themselves in terms of that area mm -hmm. of literary magazine. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, if you remember in the 90s, there was a whole explosion of poets, you know, Jessica uh -huh. Kiermaier, Kevin Powell, a whole mm -hmm. bunch of people coming through. Mm -hmm. So um, it was an outlet for these young poets, poets to mm -hmm. express themselves. And um, about five years later, I started Real Sisters, oh, okay. and it's in the same spirit because at that time um, I was actually doing a short f film called Underground Voices with Reggie mm -hmm, Gaines, mm -hmm. and it was featuring these poets mm -hmm. in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and I discovered how hard it was as an African-American woman to get your film on the air, to get on the screen, mm -hmm. and that um, only 1% of the films that were directed in Hollywood by, were by African-American women, so as a part of that, I decided to make this outlet to give a voice. Okay. So, <laughs> White Sugar in the Black Pot um, is a story that explores the journey of Denise Mackey, a mother and wife. Mm -hmm. um, she and her husband um, learn of an opportunity to become homeowners, mm -hmm. and the conflict arises because they don't see eye to eye. Uh, she's ready to move forward with it, and he's, little, he's more hesitant. Look, Daddy. That is what I'm talking about. She's going to represent the whole second grade. And I get to miss school. Darn out, baby. Let's talk about the finance plan tonight. Look, I don't want to talk about that right now. Well, when are we going to talk about it? I don't care how much money you make. You don't decide on everything in this house. I never said anything about making more money than you. Come on. Deandra, go in there and get your clothes ready for tomorrow. Junior, help her. No! Let them stay. Lord, we thank you for the food that we are about to receive. May we use it to nourish our... I, you know, I do want to ask you about Daisy Banks. I have not mm -hmm. seen the film. I will be covering the festival uh, October the 13th and 14th, mm -hmm. but I found her, that she had a humble beginning. Her mom was, uh, could you expound on that, please? Sure, sure. By the time she's eight years old, she finds out that the parents, the couple that's raising her, were not her parents. Mm -hmm. They were a couple that her father had left her with when she was a baby because her mother had been raped and murdered in the town and was dumped in the local pond. Wow. People within the town, especially the white community, have a sense of who did it, right. and some people in the black community, but no one was ever prosecuted. Mm -hmm. But it was always an open secret that three white men murdered her right. for whatever reason, mm -hmm. but were never prosecuted. So she always grew up, like she grew up thinking these people were her parents until the kids started taunting her okay. at eight years old, and then she realized they're not really her parents. And then once that's revealed, it totally alters who she is. 
In 1957, Little Rock, Arkansas, became the battleground for one of the most notorious school desegregation fights in America. At its center stood one woman, Daisy Bates. If you are fighting for uh, the rights of man, you never free from fear. I never know when they're going to pass here and blow this house to bits. But nevertheless, I feel if I'm going to live in this town and live with myself, I must oppose hatred and prejudice in any way that I can. Daisy Bates was a rebel rouser. She was pointing her fingers at people. She was organizing boycotts. She was an organizer. And there were a lot of people who feared her. By 1997, when I discovered Daisy Bates in a book called I Dream a World, it was her story among 74 extraordinary black women that captured my imagination. Who was this unconventional woman who refused to stay in her place? Yeah, there's so many um, great featured films. We actually have um, the third segment of Little Brother. This is a segment by Nicole Franklin and mm -hmm. Jasmine Tiggett, where they're going around the country and talking to um, young um, African-American boys who are like nine, 10 years old and, and asking them about their lives mm -hmm. and what they feel and what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, we have another film called uh, My Therio Boys mm -hmm. and it's dealing with autism mm -hmm. and how a mother is, um, you know, her life and dealing with that uh, disease. And mm -hmm. it's really um, something that you know, we don't really address in our community. Autism, yeah. yeah. We had a person on the show earlier this year about that, a black woman who uh, pretty much took the uh, rain by the hand uh, with the bull, the horns by the bull, mm -hmm. and tried to heal her, her child herself. Yeah. But it's really prevalent in the black community yeah. and so forth. Okay. Yeah, and then we have light film like The, the Last First Kiss, mm -hmm. uh, which is yes. like a romantic <laughs> comedy that right. I think yeah. people mm -hmm. are going to enjoy. So everything's not so serious about Real Sisters but we do like to explore oh, yeah. um, different issues. Okay. And we have the film as a feature, Soulful Junkies, Byron mm -hmm. Hearns film. That That's just very popular. Won. Yeah. That was on PBS, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Was it? Oh, it I think it's going to air yet. yet. Not yet. It will. Not yet. Yeah. Because yeah. he's been making his round. Yeah, he's yeah. been an urban And round. I think yeah. that is so important. It's excellent film. Oh. Until the now so infamous plow took place. Excuse me. Can we just locate this elusive snack stand? I suppose. Ah! Thank you. Wow, that was fun. That was an interesting film. That was mm. that was rather cute. Yeah. Okay, please call in if you hear us. 212-757-1393. That's 212-757-1393. And lo and behold, we have a call. Caller, you watch us talk TV show. Say hi to the beautiful sisters of the real sisters of the Diaspora <laughs> Film Festival and Lecture Series. Hello. Yes, hi, my name is Drayton Jordan. Hi, how are you? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Harlem. I'm actually a filmmaker. Uh, okay. As a filmmaker, I'm pretty much impressed with that little trailer there. I thought it was shot pretty well. Okay, thank and you. And my question is, uh, two questions. Who was the actress and who wrote that short film? Um, I do not have that information, but I could find it. You can find it on our website, realsisters.org. Uh, we have more than like about 20 films, so sometimes I don't have every single name. That's okay. But the first last kiss is um, we were given an award actually for um, the cinematography. Mm -hmm. It was excellent, shot in uh, Central Park. It's such a very New York type film. Yes, uh huh. And um, you know, there's this romantic thread, and uh, the whole deal is that she's about to get married the next day, oh, and then okay. she finds herself <laughs> having this flirty it thing. Very, Go ahead. It's Go ahead. very promising the film. And I was wondering, did you uh, show that film in any film festivals? Okay, did he show? Did, oh, was yeah, the film? He's, he's, he's shown. Um, this film has been in several film festivals. Okay, and it will be shown yeah. at the film festival on October 13th, yeah. also. Yeah. 
All right. real sisters. So come and check it out, okay? You got it, lady. Have a great day, lady. Okay, thank Bye-bye. you for calling. Okay. I want you uh, to talk about African voices and so forth. Yeah. How long are you celebrating your 20th anniversary? Yeah. Was well, that going to be the same well, time as the film festival? Well, actually, it's a little bit. We've been celebrating all year, but it's going to accumulate this December with this wonderful art exhibition at the Schaumburg Center, which I hope everyone out there will come and mm-hmm. support. It's going to be free December mm-hmm. the 8th, mm-hmm. and it's going to feature um, the front covers of African voices. Okay. And we've had so many artists um, over the years. Mm-hmm. Some of them are well known. Um, some of them are, are are just local artists who've been really just doing such wonderful work. So, how many covers have? How many uh, magazines? It'll be about it'll be um, about twenty covers, more or less, that we're going to mm-hmm. feature the front and back because we always have art on the front cover. Okay. And we are very blessed to have um, cover. Danny Simmons curating. This is um, uh, mm-hmm. one of the front covers. That's beautiful, yeah. okay. Yeah. And this is another yeah. one, right? Yeah, and that's Otto yeah, Nails. That's the great Otto Nails. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have, you have different artists? Different illus- artists. Illustrators. And if you have any visual artists that are out there, we welcome them to send in their work. Okay. Yeah, that's one of our goals um, as a publication and organization is to support visual artists. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we had earlier this year in April, we had this wonderful tribute to Garden Parks where we featured like over 30 artists in the community. Oh, really? That's yeah. A, did, you, did you have it at the Schaumburg? Uh, or we had the, this one at uh, Local 1199 on 42nd Street. Yes, they have I know this where wonderful at. gallery down there that yeah. people should go to. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, it's different covers uh, mm-hmm. throughout the years that so we've So, do done. you know who that? That's your latest cover, right? No, that's not no. the latest okay. cover. Um, that's but, beautiful. That's yeah, a beautiful. That's a that looks like Haitian, Haiti. Mm-hmm. Watch your Sister Talk TV show. Please call in. I know there are aspiring filmmakers out here because I'm one, and I'm definitely asking them questions about <laughs> what I can do to probably get my my stuff out there. Please call 212-757-1393. That's 212-757-1393. Uh, also, I just wanted to add that um, this year, in honor of our 15th anniversary, we've made an extra effort this year to invite um, film distributors to the festival and to actually we have a little private reception where artists will make uh, meet like people from Women Make Movies, the National Black uh, Programming Consortium. Mm-hmm. So we are making an effort to connect. Um, women filmmakers in our festival so that they could get their their film could have a life beyond the festival so people could get it in their hands their film speaking of the film festival Matafa mm-hmm. yeah. who what people are you have luminaries there that are mm-hmm. pretty much hosting the mm-hmm. film festival oh, yeah yeah Can we you? have a we have a really great lineup this year first of all some of our honorees we're honoring uh, Tim and Daphne Reed yes you mm-hmm. all may remember um, Tim from Frank's place and yes. mm-hmm. as a couple they own uh, one of the few black owned uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry movie studios in the nation in Virginia it's called mm-hmm. New Millennium Studios mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, to speak to what Carolyn was talking about ownership mm-hmm. um, they are not there uh, Daphne Maxwell Reed will be at the festival mm-hmm. on the Friday and Saturday mm-hmm. and um, uh, Tim will actually be accepting his award uh, via Skype later on he's working on a project mm-hmm. but they will be there for part of the festival we also have um, Michelle Mater yes. mm-hmm. uh, founder and director of Creatively Speaking which is a wonderful um, series that promotes most independent filmmakers of color. Mm, mm-hmm. We're also honoring Winston Sinclair, okay. who's a video and film producer on her own and a casting director for decades now. Right. Uh, Terry Williams, everyone mm-hmm. knows Terry Williams, Terry mm-hmm. Williams Agency, the publicist. Mm-hmm. She's our MC for the award ceremony mm-hmm. on Sunday evening. And we have a wonderful performance by Imani Uzuri, who's mm-hmm. a gifted vocalist. Yes, I know. Um, yeah. Who else did I leave out? We have oh, we, we have a special done. workshop with Sam. Oh, Bowen, yes. yes. One of the right. major about editing. producers and right. editing, and that's on yes. Sunday yes. from 1 to 3 p.m. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, and yeah. a tribute to Black Side, which is a phenomenal um, decades-old independent black studio from which things like uh, Eyes on the Prize, I'll Make Me a World, and great mm-hmm. documentaries came out of Black Side. Mm-hmm. So we're doing a tribute to Black Side and some of the the original members of Black Side will be there. And it's uh, affordable mm-hmm. also, right? Economical. Oh, very. Yeah, yeah. And we can get all the information. Say we need, we're telling you, <laughs> yeah. like, for yeah. a section, it's $7. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm always advocating for raising the price. Yeah, you have all the information on <laughs> the website, website and so yeah. forth. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Real and our, sisters. And our Facebook org. page also is, is a good resource. If you like our Facebook yeah. page, you can get our updates. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can sign up and Yes, and, and it's Real Sisters, R-E-E-L. 
<laughs> How did you get Tim Reed and Daphne Reed to, you just reached out to them and told yes. them? Yeah, one member yes. of our committee uh, reached out to them and invited them. Why are yeah. you honoring them, though? Because of, they have oh. a production studio. They had done so much of a career, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, on TV and, and film that we wanted to really, you know, say that we treasure their work. So mm -hmm. that's why we honor them. Yes, and the type of work yeah. that they've done has always presented black people in an upstanding way. Yes. Yes. You know, as yes, human beings have. of integrity and funny and, but you know, fully fleshed out characters. Yeah. We appreciate that. So what's the goal of uh, Real Sisters? What's the goal? Well, the goal is to, um, we actually, we are a global festival. We mm -hmm. have films from all across the uh, mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we would love to be able to tour some of these wonderful films, um, not just um, in the United States, but actually overseas and, you know, different parts of Africa. So that's one of the goals.